But we move on to the next match. It's the United mm-hmm. Empire's Great Okan and TJP taking on just four guys, Takamichi Noku, Yoshinobu mm-hmm. Kanemaru, otherwise known as Takanobu. <laughs> I'm just making the worst <laughs> thing at this point now. <laughs> oh, and I loved at the beginning of this one too. Um, I don't know if you heard on commentary. I don't hear it often, but sometimes I hear it. Chris Charlton all hailed Great Okan. I loved it. Oh yeah, loved I got it. you. Gotta love that. There's a great quick little start from TJP and Kanemaru mm-hmm. in this trading the holds and drop kicks and mm-hmm. ah, it's just great back and forth um tjp at one point inadvertently striking great Ocon on the apron mm-hmm. um and then kanamar ends up sending tjp into con sending him to the floor and it was just like a it, it's kind of really worked it and then the big point of this match was kanamaru and taka working the knee of tjp mm-hmm. it was really working that knee mm-hmm. and yeah, that's what I say. Probably a good 75 80 percent of this match was was them working that knee. Mm-hmm. And yeah. like, there was a rate a spot at the end where TGP goes for the plancha but missed. But Khan still gets the sheep killer on in the ring on Taka and get, gets the submission victory. But like, mm-hmm. he's really selling that knee after the match. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And man, did Ocon viciously put that sheep killer on to Taka. Mm-hmm. And Taka, man, just the experience he has, he knows how to sell it so over the top. I loved it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, TJP really like selling the knee, knee brace or the uh, the knee pad was down, the boot was unlaced. Um, could this be a, an issue for um, the IWGP Junior Tag Team Champions going into their match against Doki and Kanemaru? I hope I hope it's not, but it's in. That's the story they're trying to tell. Is will TJP go in at one hundred percent? I I'm not gonna lie. I don't suspect it will. I, I feel that like I love Kanemaru and and Doki and the pairing of them, but I just don't quite feel that they're ready to to represent the tag division quite mm-hmm. yet as a team. Um, I I feel that the United Empire is just. At those, as their namesake says, they're just that more united that TJP and Akira are going to be able to kind of pull that out of the bag. But we'll see when we get there. I very much agree with that. We move on to the, ne- the next, the other match that involved the exact same factions. Your mm-hmm. name is Akira and Osprey taking on just four guys, Doki and Taichi. I don't mm-hmm. have a name for those two, so. <laughs> I don't have a name for these ones. Sorry. Sorry yeah, I was just I'm, I'm I'm not drawing anything right now. Tai yeah. Doki. Um, no, you're not gonna try. <laughs> tai Doki. Tai Doki. <laughs> that, that sounds like a Street Fighter move. I can't it's about, <laughs> but Tai Doki. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> oh, Jesus, this is a fun show. Um, again, a really good back and forth match. It, again, this it was very much focused on Tai Chi and Osprey's mm-hmm. uh, feud. Here is, is what a lot of this focused around. Um, mm-hmm. Really work again, working Osprey's neck. Like that's what again the focus. You always work Osprey's neck. It's his. It's his. It's his weak point. It, it really mm-hmm. is. He's had neck mm-hmm. problems in the past. Um, but yeah, um, I didn't take it honestly. It was, Again, my favorite press in the world, and I didn't really take a lot of notes here. It was just a lot of really great back and forth, um, mm. just a lot of really great athleticism. There's a couple spots where the uh, Tai Chi chokes uh, Osprey with the microphone on, stand on the floor. There's mm. a spot where Osprey choked uh, Tai Chi with the microphone stand on the floor. Um, I will say this: that uh, Os- that there was one spot where uh, he uh, Doki got the daybreaker. Oof. Gotta love it. I love that daybreaker. Mm-hmm, it looks so good. Mm-hmm. There's a great spot. Um, Osprey stops the suplex to the Luna, goes for the power bomb, but it gets like Dragon Rana, like Rana into a pin. But mm. Akira in with that fireball knee strike to mm-hmm. Doki to break the pin of absolute perfection of a breakup pin. Mm-hmm. Um, end of the match though comes Taichi, he goes for the power bomb. Akira slips out. Osprey hits the hook kick on him, uh, and then uh. And then sends Akira like in like throw throwing drop kick into him in the corner. Mm-hmm. Uh, at least, uh, to uh, Doki, and uh, then he lines him up, hits that hidden blade, and on Doki and Osprey picks up the win mm-hmm. again. Mm-hmm. Like that hidden blade is it's uh, as much as I love Stormbreaker, I think that's going that's his. I gotta pull this out to crush somebody. Move where the hidden mm-hmm. blade is. His, I think that's gonna be the standard finish. And 
that Stormbreaker is going to be that special finish. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel like the Hidden Blade has become that trigger pin for him, that trigger ending for him when he's like, okay, I'm done. I need a break. I need a nappy nap. This is what we pull out. Um, yeah. This was a really, really fun match for me. Um, something I noted, um, uh, the, the Daybreaker you had mentioned, obviously that's one of my favorite moves that Doki does. Mm -hmm. But um, as we had mentioned earlier, um, you know, we got the the Zack Sabre Jr., who is a significantly smaller than Ishii, um, having to feed three or four shots into um, Ishii to, to kind of get Ishii to kind of mm -hmm. um, react um, to Ishii's one shot to Zack Sabre Jr. That Daybreaker was a great example also. I mean, that's his finish. Mm -hmm. and But Zack Sabre Jr., or sorry, um, Will Ospreay, more a heavyweight than um, a, a junior like Doki. So it made sense to me that, you know, even though Doki has put on a lot of muscle and has really bulked up in the last couple months, he's still not that heavyweight level to be able to pull off mm -hmm. a finish on, on a heavyweight. Um, I had a lot of fun with this match, especially like getting confused on who was in the ring for the United Empire. How much does Akira kind of look like just a minimized, like slightly smaller version <laughs> of Will Ospreay? You said that and earlier. Seeing, yeah. yeah, seeing them next to each other, it was really evident. It just, Will Ospreay's just like a slightly beefier version <laughs> of Akira. And I, like at one point I was the like- beards. Um, The beards, yeah, the beards, the hair. Everything, even their movement, the way they move, how they wrestle. It's They're tight. absolutely incredible. They're tight. Exactly. It, 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 and it's so perfect. I loved it. I was actually amused by it. Um, but And then how well they work together also. And seeing, again, I have to relate back to their socials, seeing the camaraderie with them on their social medias. It, it's just absolutely hilarious to see how this it, team is so bonded. Just with the socials, it feels like Big Brother, Little Brother is what yeah. these two really feel like. Like mm -hmm. that's what it feels like to me is Big Brother, Little Brother. Yeah, and I think I say the same thing for Akira with TJP. It's Big Brother, Little Brother too. Mm -hmm. But I, I feel I see it even more because it's like they look each other. They look like the brother. They look like they could be brothers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and this like, was a really really fun match for me. I really really enjoyed this one. Yeah. Maybe Akira's not really Italian. He was just given to an Italian family when he's actually Osprey's long lost little brother. <laughs> <laughs> But keep talking in Italian because mm, that language. <laughs> We move on to the semi main event of the evening. We're getting a little long here. Um, it is Shota Umino to and Tomaki Hanma taking on LIJ, Sonata, and Naito. Again, mm -hmm. very good match. Um, Hanma, I think, showing that he still got something in the tank. But not mm -hmm. not a main event. I'm going to go after a title, something in a tank. Like he's there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a very good support person for anybody in this company, and he, he shows 100%. that he can really do it. Um, Naito ends up on the was it was it Naito's on the floor, and uh, Sin, Sinata, uh, how is it? Umino does like a kick to Sonata, then comes running for some out and just does the flip into the Naito pose. Mm -hmm. I was like. Oh, you cocky little shit. <laughs> yeah. it, it was appropriate, though. It was an appropriate taunt for the time of the match. Yeah, but the end of the match comes with Hanma getting a clothesline to the back of the head of Naito. But Sonata comes in, hits a drop kick, and mm -hmm. Naito scores a beautiful enziguri. Sonata mm -hmm. hits a backdrop on a suplex, and Naito rolls over into the jackknife cover to get the win. Mm -hmm. Then after that, Naito hits Destino on Umino. Mm -hmm. and, After and, hitting them in the balls. Yes, and I know they're going to compete on the next few shows that are the house shows, but mm -hmm. this is the last thing we see mm -hmm. of, of these two is is him putting Destino on Umino. So, so to me, that leads me going, will Umino win And this? the pin. So now yeah. I'm counting the pin after. Yeah, so it's like... It's, it's Because like, Red Shizu Umino refused. Or like, what is this foreshadowing? That, that's the real thing. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the couple things that I wanted to note in this one is, first of all, Naito getting back at Shota after the, the taunt um, on the inside there, throwing Shota into every barricade possible at ringside. Um, it kind of bothered me because the, the focus was taken away 
from the incredible in-ring competition between Hamna and Sonata that was still happening while Shota Umino was being ping-ponged um, around the outside there. I felt that Sonata really, really wrestled smart in this match, um, particularly against Hamna. Um, what I also really, really enjoyed was... Oh, goodness. <clears throat> afterwards I, again the just the ball shot the laying him out um choking red shows umino on the outside um in front of the commentary it's just naito naito doing his mind messery that he's very very good at um are we seeing some foreshadowing i do especially looking in this photo i mean they shota's got the same hairstyle as naito in this one, um, we're going to be seeing a battle of, of the, the new hotness and the old flame kind of in New Japan right now. I'm very excited for this match. I like that. I like that. Mm. I really like that little word. You're not the only one with the fun names today. Perfect. <laughs> I move on to the main event of the evening. It's Chaos. is Kajushiko Kata and Yo team up with Resuke Taguchi taking on LJ's Bushi, Hiromu, and Takagi. Again, this is building Okada versus... Uh, Takagi for February 11th. This is building Yo versus uh, Hiromu for, I think, the 4th or 5th. I can't remember which day it is. But, yeah, it's mm -hmm. very much building that. And then it's building Bushi messing with Taguchi's crotch. <laughs> well, he does it. He gets a hold where he's got a hold of the legs of Taguchi, and then he puts his foot into the crotch of Taguchi and is pulling. And it's I just mean, like at that point, though, it was payback for the Brazilian lap dance that he did on Hiromu at the beginning of the match. I, I know, but it's still, he does it. He, Bush, if Bushi and Taguchi are in there, he's doing something to Taguchi's crotch. He's obsessed with Taguchi's crotch. Even it, during it, the tag team, um, the, the Super Junior Tag Team League, yeah, it, it was the same thing. He targeted Taguchi's balls. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I will say that. against him, man. Yeah, I will say this for Okada, though. I'm really I'm kind of done with his Anoki jackets. Um, they look yeah. way too big on him. Mm -hmm. they, it just don't fit. You can go with that same style of stuff, but mm -hmm. go back to your old, style, your old style of jacket that mm -hmm. fit you better because he looks just like a little kid wearing his dad's coat. Like, so it's literally... Fashion. No, like, again, yeah, I don't, I agree with that, but it's just that's how it feels to me. Is he's a little kid wearing his daddy, daddy and Oki's jacket. That's all it feels to me. And I'm just like, why are you like, I, I know you're, you're the new representation, you're the new and for this company, mm -hmm. but you don't have to be him. You can, you are your own person forever. Go back to being yourself. You don't need, and I just, it, the look, the size, I, I'm just, I'm mm -hmm. done with that jacket. Um, but this match was very, very good. Takagi, just the power on this guy is absolutely phenomenal. Okada, just running wild, doing some crazy stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Getting up with the flapjack. Um, and, yeah, it, it's a lot of great stuff. Okada with that drop, again, that drop kick, it, it's it's second only to Kevin Knight. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Kevin Knight's got a better drop kick, in my opinion. Um, <laughs> the end of this match comes, though. Yo hit Poison Ron as Hiromu. Mm -hmm. He gets kicked in the head by Bushi, but comes back with a super kick of his own. Hits the DMV, which is a kneecap brain buster. Then hits the direct drive, the butterfly DDT suplex, which is eerily similar to Shota Umino's uh, or Death Rider. Mm -hmm. Um Gets the win on Bushi here. So, again, very, very good uh, match here. Um, I, I absolutely loved it. Like, a great way to cap off the show. Mm -hmm. I have to agree. Um, Shingo, yeah, as, as you mentioned, showing off that strength, um, really tossing around Okada um, and, and almost, like, working off that kind of, I don't want to say pissiness, but it, it does seem to be a pissiness that Okada does seem to have and has had for the last couple shows, um, most likely because of the, the Kaido um, situation. But, mm -hmm. you know, um, Shingo really was um, giving it to Okada in this one. He had a wicked sliding lariat on Okada, just taking his head off. Mm -hmm. um, amazing, amazing bout. Um, something that I wanted to go back to that you were saying with um, Okada's uh, jacket I was actually speaking to somebody, a good friend of mine, who also used to be a wrestler. His name is Ryan. He was saying the exact same thing. Um, looking at it from a world champion perspective, it, the outfit and the jacket, it's, it's very plain. 
it, mm-hmm. it doesn't say world champion. It kind of says, hi, I'm here. And, and I do have, hi, to I'm trying to be my daddy. Yeah. It, it, it's, it doesn't feel authentic to what it is that we know mm. Okada is capable of presenting to us. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm hoping to see um, a little bit of an evolution of Okada um, in, in 2023 uh, going forward here. Yeah. Me, oh, and me. also just to throw out there, there were three Bushis in the crowd for this one, two gold and black and one silver and black. Gotta love the Bushies. Gotta love Bushy. the Bushies. So <laughs> we are coming to the end of this show. I want to thank everybody that's watched the show. Please like, subscribe, comment below. We absolutely want to interact with you. The more likes and subscribes we get, the better it helps us through mm-hmm. YouTube and the comments. We just want to talk to you. We want to chat with you. We want to. We want to. We want to talk about professional. We had a great. Um, mm-hmm. I don't have it him up right now. I should have had him up. Uh, give me a sec. He, he's a big commenter on our stardom shows. Where is it? Uh, God damn it. Where the heck is Oh, it? yes. Uh, I just had a great conversation with him uh, over the last day or two. Sorry, I don't mean to make this uh, too long, but uh, Ground MTG. Like, thank you for for all mm-hmm. reaching out so much with everything you've been doing. You've been reaching out so much. You might not see this because I don't know if you're watching our New Japan stuff. But, and then we were talking about the February 4th show for Stardom. So please, mm-hmm. like all that, we want to talk to you. We want to communicate. We want to have a great conversation with you. So please reach out. And then um, I want to say thank you to Rogue Energy. Uh, again, 10% off your order using OLE, code OLEPOD. Scan the QR code down the bottom. Go to rogueenergy.com. And the OLE Pods comes from our partnership with our good friends at our local establishment. I, put, I should put that stuff up on the screen twitch.tv slash our local establishment uh on instagram and tiktok at ole podcast and on youtube.com slash slash at our local establishment and uh our other partner our good buddy mike the ref you want to you want to support this man he is absolutely phenomenal uh you can check him out on youtube.com slash at backbreaker video where you might be watching us uh on twitch.tv slash mike the ref where he's got Awesome, great streams going on. And YouTube.com slash Backbreaker Gaming, where it's all his videos coming up from all his gaming streams. And if you are watching us on Backbreaker Video, please check out Andre and Mel Ball Wrestling Talk on YouTube. And, uh, yeah, please check us out there. And if, and if you're watching us there, please like and subscribe. Yes, my friend. And if we're looking to follow you on social media, where are we going to find you? On Twitter, at that Canada guy. Instagram, at that Canada dude. On, on Hive, at that Canada guy. And on Mastodon, at that Canada guy. And Andre, also throughout the week, where else can we find you on other channels and shows? Coming up soon, you're going to be able to find me on uh, back on OLE with my good buddy Old Ed, where we're going to be ta- we're going to be doing Marvel talk on the weekend that uh, to me the 18th or the 19th. We'll be doing a live stream, and then the show will be up on the OLE YouTube page afterwards for you to check out. We'll be talking Ant Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania finally been starting to hear things about this i am so excited for this and if you're wanting to follow a melball you can do it on twitter at collins melball and you can do that on instagram facebook and mastodon at melball collins you can also catch me on our facebook fan page there andre and melball's wrestling talk you can catch me on our our local establishment every two weeks on my weekly by bi-weekly episodic show paramindful where we talk all things spooky ooky ish with my good friend alex and my good friend carl carafel you can also catch me on our ladies wrestling showcase with the beautiful astrid pizarro every couple of weeks where we discuss everything all women's wrestling and showcase the ladies so my friend andre do we have anything else to say to the beautiful people before we sign off here thank you for tuning in Excellent. Nice sentiment, my friend. So that being said, I am your Mel Ball. That over there is your Andre. We will see you next time. Adios.